Hi students and welcome back to Computer Practice with Mr. H and today we're going to do episode 2 which is Mail Merge and we're first going to look at how to create a data source document. Before we go into detail on to how to create a data source document, I first want you to understand that Mail Merge is divided into three different parts and all three is really important. The first part is creating your data source document. The second part is creating the main document, which is basically a letter that you have to type and you have to insert merge fields where it's indicated. And the last part is when you have to do the actual merge. It's important that you do all three because you can't do the one without the other one. For example, if you don't have a data source document, you will not be able to insert any merge fields. And if you don't have a data source document and you didn't insert any mail, any um, merge fields, then you are not able to merge. So it's crucial that you start with the first part, which is the data source document. So let's quickly look at what you need to do. So first of all, you need to use a database application to prepare the following data documentation in Arial size 9. And the main reason why they tell you to, to use a specific font is because there are more than one way to create a data source document. And if you're going to use, for example, Microsoft Word, well, the three ways is, and I'm going to go into more detail into that, is you can either create it in, in, the, in, in the mailing tab of Microsoft Word, where you use an actual Word function, or you can use it just creating a normal table in Microsoft Word, or you can use an Excel document to also create a data source file. We are specifically going to use the mailing tab in this so one of the reasons why they, they ask you to use Arial Size 9, not specifically Arial Size 9, in this case it's Arial Size 9, but if an examiner specifically tells you a font and a size, that is to ensure that the paper or the, do the document comes out on one page. It's important that a data source document comes out on one page, it must never come out on two pages. Alright, and one reason for that is so that all the text should be visible in each column but i'm getting ahead of myself type your exam number and question number is indicated above it's important that you type your exam number and question number as indicated into the data source file all right follow the instructions do what the question paper is asking you to do that is in computer practice you get marks for following your instructions. If you don't follow your instructions, you're not going to get your marks. So in this case, they want you to type your exam number and your question number into the data source document. And this is a specific instruction that you're going to find overall for all your questions. Your examination number is your ID number. It's not your student number. So please also remember that. Make sure that all the information in the tables is visible and appears in one row. That's just another way of saying, make sure it comes out on one page. Adjust the column widths of the document. To ensure that it comes out on one page, sometimes you also have to adjust your, your columns to make sure that all the text is, um, is visible and that it doesn't go over two pages. But really important students, do not, when you adjust your columns, number two, adjust column widths. Make sure that you do not cut off any of the text inside of the columns because in computer practice we have two things or you get your marks based on two things which is accuracy and manipulation. Manipulation is did the student do what was instructed and accuracy did the student make any typing or spelling mistakes. And if you make any typing mistakes you're going to lose accuracy marks. So if you're going to cut off and you work with a table and you cut off any of the text that's going to count against you, against your accuracy marks. Then we are going to save and print the data source file. Alright, so now we're going to create a data source document. For this, you're going to do it in Microsoft Word. We're going to go to Microsoft Word. And if you don't know how to go there, all that you do is you click on type into your search box Word until you find something Word that says Word 2016. Please do not get confused with WordPad. That is something totally different. So Word 2016, click on it so that you can get to your um, Word 
templates and we're going to use a blank document. So I went ahead and um, inserted a screenshot of what we are supposed to type into our mail merge data source file. And um, so don't get distracted by this, it's just a guide for myself. You, on the other hand, you have your question paper next to you. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the, the tabs in Microsoft Word and you will notice there's one particular tab that's called the mailings tab and this is the tab specifically for mail merge and you will notice that once you click on mailings there's certain buttons that's not active and that's because we haven't typed anything yet we haven't created any data source document so to do that the only options that we have available is your envelopes, your labels, your start mail merge and your select recipients. Now, you can use start mail merge, but I would prefer that you use select recipients because it gives you three options. The first option is type a new list. The second one, use an existing list. And the third one is choose from your outlook context. And what they are asking you here is basically this list that you see here, Remember the list in your question paper, there's certain headings and there's certain information. This is a list, it's a table that you have to create. This you now have to go and insert into Microsoft Word. You can either use a normal table where you just create a table, insert a table. You go and count how many columns are you going to need for your headings. How many rows are you going to need in this case if you're going to create a table you're going to use you're going to need one two three four rows and you're going to need one two three four five six seven eight nine ten columns keep that in mind but we're not going to create a table we're going to use the mailings tab we're going to click on select recipients and we're going to type a new list and here, Microsoft Word gives you a table, basically. It already gives you a table with headings. But this is not the same headings that we want. We want not title, we want name. We don't want first name, we want address one. We don't want last name, we want address two. Are you with me? So how do I change this? I can go and I can and I'm going to customize the columns. I'm going to click on customize columns and here are all the columns, these ones. I don't want any of them. Well, I could add new ones. I can delete these ones or I could rename them. But the fastest method would just be to delete them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete. I'm literally going to delete all of them. Unfortunately, I'll have to do them one by one. I'll have to delete them one by one. The faster you click, the faster you will be done. So just spend a few seconds on deleting them. Once all of them are gone, you see you only have the option to add. So I'm going to add my first one, the one is name. And please take note it's typed in capital letters, so yours must also be capital. Okay. You can also just add one by one. So I'm gonna pause the video so that you can so I can finish all of them and then we can then we can continue. So I've finished all of them. Once I've added all my field names, I'm going to click on OK. And there they are now. They are now the ones that I want. So now I can actually go and complete the rest of my information. Um, so here we have our first row. And to insert more rows, I just click on New Entry. I know that I'm going to need two more, three. I'm going to need space for this information, this information, this information. So I'm going, I have one already, so I can just click on new entry for my second row. And then I have another one for my first, for my first row. 
if I wanted to delete anything, any rows, then I just click on delete entry and it goes back. All right, so there's my first one. I'm gonna, I want a second one and a third one. All right, going back to my first row. Here, the first instruction is under the name, I must type in my exam number and then question I'm in the second row. So what I usually do is I finish a whole column first before I continue to the next column. So the first column once, my ID number. And in the second, sorry, the second row of the name column, it wants question 10. In capital letters. And in the third row of the name column, it wants the information of Mr. P.J. Williams. Alright, then I'm going to do the second one, second row, second column, address 1, so 14 Church Street, 15 Short Street, and 16 long etc etc and I'm going to do this for the rest of my columns as well so I'm going to pause the video again I'm going to finish my data source file and then we will continue with the next steps okay so I finished the data source file I completed the information use your scroll bar if you want to move or find your other headings so if you for example if you get to agent and you want to get to the other offers prop type prop address etc then you just use your scroll bar to get there so after you've finished your data source file you can now go and save it open it up and print it again so i'm going to click on ok it's going to ask me to give my data source a name it's very important that you give it a name and usually in the question paper it will tell you what that name should be in this case it's question 10a so you give your data source a name question 10a and also very important, make sure that you know where you are saving this document. I'm going to save mine on my desktop, just so that it's easier to find. But you should probably save it either in your examination folder or in your student folder, depending on what you are using. So now I am, I'm also going to delete this information because I'm not going to need it anymore. So I want the blank document. Stay on the, stay on the Word document that you, that you opened. Um, the beginning but what i'm going to do now is i'm going to go and find my data source file so i'm just quickly going to minimize whatever documents i have opened and i'm going to go to my desktop remember i saved my data source document on my desktop and you are going to have two documents with the same name question 10a and question 10a one is going to have a padlock icon next to what happens when there's a lock on the door you can't open that door so the only one that's open this one is closed the only one that's open is this option here so i'm going to double click on this option and it's going to open microsoft access and you're going to if it's asking you to enable your content you must always enable your content and on your left hand side under tables you're going to open office address list you're going to double click on it so that you can find your data source document. All right, so now it's opened up. And the first thing that you need to do is, we're gonna just quickly go back to our question paper and the question paper specified aerial size nine. So that's what we're gonna have to go and do. We're gonna change the font. Okay. Uh, you can type it in there if you have any problems, like myself, my mouse is giving me problems. I'm going to click on Arial and I'm going to type it in there and I'm just going to press enter. 
and then the size I'm going to type it in then I'm just going to press enter so now it's aerial size 9 and the next thing is go and check is everything visible is all the text visible I can already see that church street is cut off um, my emails are cut off my property address is cut off my sales price is cut off there so I need to go and fix that and what you're going to do is you're going to just go to your to in, move, put your cursor inside of the column heading there between the two columns until the cursor changes and you're going to double click so I'm going to do this over here I'm going to put my cursor in, in between and I'm just going to double click I'm going to do it for all my columns just to make sure that I don't miss anything I've done that and I'm going to go to file print print preview just to go and check what's going on what is going to happen if I print the image so I can already see this is coming out on a portrait page and it's clearly cutting off my information and it's going to basically my print my data source file is going to come out on two pages if I leave the portrait so I'm going to change it to landscape Right. it's still going to come out on two pages there's two columns that's going to be cut off and one way to solve that is if I change the margin so I can go and change the margin to narrow and now all my headings are or all my columns is basically on one page so that's just I've, I've given you now a few methods what you could do if your document does not come out on one page right so there's three different things you might not need to use all of them in different question papers but this is the extreme um, that you can go to if you want to make sure that your data source document comes out on one page and once it comes out on one page then you can just simply print the document and it will come out remember there should be a watermark that will clearly indicate to the invigilator that who this printout belongs to alternatively they must just look at what is the person's id number and what is the question number um, that is being used all right so thank you so much students for watching and join me in the next video where i will be discussing the second part of my merge which is the main document that we certainly much better.